When the game launched, Freddy was the best leader in the game, hands down. Does he still hold this title seven years later? We'll see. Today we're going to go over Frederick of Germany, discussing his Civ and leader abilities, and my preferred strategy for playing them, and I'll give a final rating at the end of the video. If you like this series, please remember to give me a like, it takes one second for you to do this, and it makes hours of work on my end worthwhile. I am working on my goal of 1000 subscribers, and I'm getting there, all thanks to your help. Freddy is a top tier leader, but none of this is due to him as a leader. His leader ability is Holy Roman Emperor, which gives you an additional military card in all governments and gives you a plus 7 combat bonus towards fighting city-states. Both of these are incredibly niche abilities. Military cards are often used are the least overall and you almost never want to kill city-states. Now don't get me wrong here, military cards are not bad, and extra cards are always just good for every government, and if you go into a Forbidden Palace build plus Owls of Minerva, I think Freddy has the option of having the most extra policy cards in all of the slots possible, but Military cards are not the best compared to economic cards. All a military card slot likes to do is early on you get to plug in a military policy into the Merchant Republic government which gives you usually the two econ cards. It's a small niche buff that you're not going to notice very much even if you are going to war. It just sort of helps you build, you know, cavalry units and ranged units cheaper at the same time which is okay. Freddy's unique unit is the U-Boat, and I'm not even going to bother talking about the U-Boat because I don't think anyone has ever talked or built the U-Boat for anything other than late game error score. Some rings just aren't good. Don't do it. Yeah. What makes Freddy in Germany so amazing is his civilization ability. Free Imperial Cities allows each city to build one extra district upon foundation. So when you found a city, you get to drop two districts instead of one. Now there is huge flexibility here. This unlocks so much. You don't have to choose between a holy site or a campus in your capital anymore. You can get both of them at pop four, no before pop four, assuming you can get the tech fast enough. And then you can get your government plaza at pop four. So by the time you're at four population, you potentially could have three districts in one city. And this is gigantic. Districts win games. That's what the whole game is built around. The more districts you have, the more of every yield you're going to have. So having more districts than every other sieve possibly can means you're going to have more yields than other sieves possibly can. This leads into Germany's next huge bonus, which is the Hansa. The Hansa is in the run for the best unique uh, district in the game, but it's not my favorite. The Hansa is an industrial zone that is half cost and gets extra production for resource tiles and most importantly, plus two production when next to a commercial hub. Now let's think about this. We're planning out sort of a, a quadrilateral here of tiles. We have a Hansa next to a commercial hub, which is also attached to a dam and an aqueduct. Think about how much production you can get there. That's plus two, plus another three, plus another two, I think. So you can get plus seven or plus eight production on an industrial zone if you have the right city for it. And you don't even need that great setup. If you just put down an aqueduct and a commercial hub, you have an amazing industrial zone, better industrial zones than anybody else can get. So th this is huge. A lot of people argue that industrial zones are not the best uh, district in the game because it takes so long to pay that production back. However, Production wins games. You need to have a lot of production. You, either you have a ton of production or you have a bajillion gold like Portugal, Elizabeth, or Molly does. 
With Germany, you kind of have both. You're getting two production and you're getting the commercial hub. Now, normally this would require at least four population. However, this doesn't happen anymore with Germany. You get them at one population, two population, three population. You could put both of them down and then you can move on to getting even more useful things like campuses and theater squares. Now with Germany, you plop down a city, you put a Hansa, you put a commercial hub, both of those immediately, you get a gold boost, you get a production boost, and this unlocks all of your potential. Now my preferred strategy of playing Frederick is not to have a set game plan at all. I go into Germany games without any sort of strategy. Germany is so good because you are so flexible. You just want to play a normal early game depending on your map. Play defensively, spread out a little bit, get the right text, build the right order. You really kind of want to go double scout and then into a monument or a builder depending on what you have, get some early settlements out. You just want to rush a little bit towards currency and apprenticeship to get your Hanses and your commercial hubs. Now this is not a huge rush because this is what most civs do anyway, it's just Germany gets a lot more bonuses out of this. You have enough production at that point and even gold to start doing whatever you want. If the map is heavy on mountains, boom, you have a science game. If you have lots of close neighbors and you have iron nearby, boom, you have a man at arms rush and you go domination. Do you have a lot of space to spread out? Go for a bit of an unorthodox culture game. You're kind of going to be struggling with national parks in your core cities, but later on, whatever, go for a, a culture game. You can even build lots of holy sites because you're not sacrificing a slot to get a holy site and you can go for a religious game. This is what makes Germany so good. You are ultimately flexible. You have a major production bonus and a district bonus. The district bonus is what's going to make you great. You, Like I said, districts win games and you just get more districts than any other city. Freddy is mostly incentivized to go for a military victory. You do get the military card and you get production and gold and they always work towards a domination victory. You don't really have a unique unit though, and you but you can build encampments without sacrificing any other district. So I'm going to give them an 8 out of 10. You're not great at it, you're not the best at it, but you do it very well. It's just not very flavorful, you don't have a good unique unit, you don't have any cool sort of like early core mechanic, you just get encampments basically and then one card. Science is where you shine. You always have space for a campus no matter what you're doing. You get them down without sacrificing anything. You get great production and that's fantastic for science victories. It allows you to build all of your district buildings. <laughs> It'll allow you to get your spaceport better. It'll allow you to build more builders to put production into your spaceport. You're getting both of these bonuses super early compared to other people because you have more districts. So 9 out of 10. Diplomacy is not bad here. You're going to get production and you're going to get gold because you need commercial hubs. You'll be using natural disasters because you're going to be causing them. And you can later go into carbon recapture projects to get even more points. So just ignore your city state attacking bonus that Frederick has that doesn't really matter and go all in on diplomacy and you'll do 7 out of 10. Culture and faith are the odd ones here. Don't get me wrong, you can do a tourism victory, but industrial zones usually don't go very well with culture games. Faith is also available to you, but you're going to be building, busy building things other than holy sites. To pay, if you want to play into the flavor of your sieve, faith doesn't feel that good, but you can do it very well. So 5 out of 10. Freddy himself is A tier. Maybe previously I would have said he was A plus, but he's not great because of Freddy. Germany is A tier, and Freddy almost doesn't play into it at all. Freddy's kind of now the worst German leader with the addition of Ludwig. Germany is fun, but Frederick is not fun. I don't play Germany because I want the extra policy card and I want to attack city states. I play Germany because I want the Hansa and the extra districts. He provides no interesting bonus to the game himself. Is he the best leader in the game now? No. Is Germany one of the best civilizations in the game? Yes. You're going to win more games as Germany than you lose. If you can even lose with Germany and not Frederick. Thank you everybody for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.